this is part of history. These pandemics are predictable. They're here. We act surprised every time one appears. Uh, but the only surprise we should be concerned about is exactly what year and how severe. Since 1990, there have been several major viral outbreaks across the globe. Will you just give us a brief timeline of some of the most notable? One of the first ones that really uh, jarred the country, uh, the world, was uh, HIV, the causative agent of AIDS. And there's arguing about exactly when it appeared, but it really began to cause problems in the mid to late 80s and early 90s. After that, we had SARS in 2002 and 2003. Uh, from southern Guangdong district of China. Uh, and uh, it uh, is a coronavirus, the first one that we've seen. Uh, then in 2009 and 10, H1N1 influenza, hit, primarily in Southwest United States and in Mexico, and then spread globally. Uh, and then 2012, we had MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And here we are now in 2020 with the emergence of COVID-19. And what I would say about all three coronaviruses, SARS, MERS, and now COVID-19, is that they are all zoonoses. They all have a primary reservoir in animals, and then the virus was able to leap to people with subsequent person-to-person -person transmission. In talking about COVID-19, how does it compare to SARS, for instance, or some of the other outbreaks that we've seen as far as just how infectious it is? This looks like uh, quite a bit more with COVID-19 in terms of person-to-person -person infectiousness. SARS had a higher mortality. In other words, it was 10%, but we were limited to 8,000 cases and about 800 deaths uh, in the world. Uh, then MERS came along, a much higher mortality, again, but fewer cases. So its mortality was about 35%. Uh, and yet now with COVID-19, highly communicable, but with a mortality that people argue, if you look at the reported cases, it's probably in the two or three percent. If you look at the cases that are quiet or that didn't cause symptoms uh, that are in the community we're just learning about from antibody testing, it may be as low as 0.3 or 0.5%. That's still three to five times more deadly than the standard every year influenza. In general, um, what we've seen is with this COVID-19 is it's highly communicable. So what makes the virus dangerous, so B1, does it hurt the body? Does it kill people? Uh, and secondly, how communicable it is. And the virus can have mutations that'll uh, change both patterns. We're hoping that we don't have something, uh, a mutation will make it more deadly. Or with something that we've seen earlier, for example, with Ebola, and that with a 50% mortality. So we need to be preparing for the next one today. I would say not only the next one, which may come in a few years, but we're going to have our average influenza epidemic coming this year on top of COVID, which is not going to disappear this summer or fall. And so I think what we should do be planning now for a robust response to the standard flu. Everybody should get vaccinated who can tolerate the vaccine. We should have a drug supply or mass uh, just ramped up to an incredibly high number and get, re get ready. If we don't, we have two epidemics, the annual flu plus the persistent COVID-19 do you have any final words about the pandemic in general and VCU's role in battling COVID-19? Well, I'm biased, but I think VCU has really stepped out front by trying to test uh, three potentially new uh, agents to treat this. And I think we'll even come up with uh, a couple more before the uh, summer is out. How much faster has this gone, this process, to try to find something that truly does attack COVID-19? Here we are just a few months into this and we have an antiviral remdesivir that we're looking at carefully. Well, this needs to be peer reviewed, but we may have that available uh, within uh, a few months. That's really rapid. 
on the vaccine study, um, it's very impressive because there are probably 90 vaccines being tested at various phases. One in Oxford that you may have heard about, and then there are a couple that uh, Dr. Fauci's mentioned that are being tested in the United States. Both investigators who are leading those say, we may have the early part of the vaccine uh, trial done by the late fall. So I think it's a very exciting time.